good morning to everyone good morning good afternoon uh, good evening where uh, wherever you are from uh, it's my pleasure to uh, welcome you all for the uh, panel strengthening use of evaluative evidence for policy making lessons from parliaments this is a very uh, special panel with parliamentarians and uh, some time ago you never believed that you know parliamentarians can talk about uh, evaluation and they uh, actively promote evaluation now uh, we have you know champions of parliamentarians promoting evaluation around the world and you know some of the champions are connected today with us so this is the parliamentarians panel uh, organized by the global parliamentarians forum for evaluation a movement of parliamentarians promoting and advocating for evaluation uh, so i again welcome all of you to this uh, interesting and exciting panel uh, to have a dialogue with parliamentarians uh, from uh, different parts of the world and regions uh, and uh, this panel is 90 minutes and of course we have you know a lead presentation and a case study presentation uh, then uh, some discussions and then of course you know we will open for this panel uh, for the participants to engage and you know uh, have a dialogue with uh, parliamentarians uh, with this note uh, let me introduce the lead presenter and the case study presenter uh, for today uh, our lead presenter is honorable kabir hashim a uh, member of parliament uh, from sri lanka uh, he uh, until uh, early this year he used to be a senior minister uh, in the government of sri lanka uh, and he is the chair of the global parliamentarians forum for evaluation and uh, he was instrumental in initiating uh, the parliamentarians movement uh, for uh, uh, for uh, uh, engaging parliamentarians in uh, promotion of evaluation uh with you know some of the colleagues in the region uh, from bangladesh and nepal uh, so uh, he will do the uh, lead presentation on colombo declaration plus 2 progress in institutionalization of evaluation uh, in parliaments so uh, that will be an inspiring uh, presentation for this session to set the background uh, and then uh, honorable natalia nikitanko uh, member of parliament from kyrgyz republic uh, will make the case study presentation bringing some you know concrete examples from uh, the kyrgyz republic uh, she is uh, uh, the chair of the eurasian parliamentarians forum for evaluation and also a, a steering committee member of the global parliamentarians forum for evaluation and she was instrumental in uh, bringing some of the uh, uh, laws in the country regarding monitoring and evaluation especially mna law uh, in kyrgyz republic in 2014 and also she was instrumental in organizing the global evaluation forum at the parliament of uh, nepal um, so i would like to invite with this note uh, honorable kabir hashim uh, our lead presenter today to uh, take the floor and uh, make his presentation over to you honorable kabir hashim good day everybody i hope uh, you can hear me loud and clear uh, i wish you all a good day because uh, we are in different parts of the world in different time zones and we are, i'm quite happy i'm really honored it's a pleasure to be here to speak on behalf of the parliamentarians today i'm sure you're seeing uh, uh, the slide presentation Uh, on your screen, you'll be seeing it, and yeah, I think most of you all who are engaged today as participants with us, I believe, are evaluators, and you will be wondering what relevance there is for parliamentarians in this whole process. But I, I think that you would understand uh, that uh, at the end of uh, what we are trying to show that without 
linking with the parliamentarians without uh, engaging them, then uh, the scope for establishing the culture of evaluation in, in nationally in different countries is going to be of no use because the end users of evaluation, the greatest end users of evaluation are the parliamentarians, the politicians, and you have to create that culture amongst them. So that is how we started this process. And that's what I'm going to speak to you about today on the progress on institutionalization uh, of evaluation in parliament and its relevance. So I'd like to go on to the second slide. Uh, so we have a, you know, uh, we have a, a sub team, uh, as you know, and uh, it's uh, the, the sub team is about the, the main, the role of evaluation, the AEW the, uh, is on the role of evaluation in providing strategic direction. Uh, so based on this, we're going to look at how uh, the role we play is going to be critical for uh, politicians, for evaluators, and for uh, overall for the SDGs to engage the parliamentarians in the process of eva evaluation. So looking at uh, the real issues uh, is that uh, if you go to the third slide, you'll see what we're talking about uh, is uh, getting today's this session what i'm trying to tell you all is that in the end what are you going to take away from here what you look at is why is it important to institutionalize evaluation in parliament because we believe that uh, in order to uh, uh, strengthen evidence-based policy making uh, in the future the one way is to ensure that parliament has a strong culture and uh, a, a institutionalized system of evaluation and how do we do that? That's what the Global Parliamentary Forum has been working on uh, in the last couple of uh, years. But it has not been an easy road, it has been a hard road for us. So in the pursuit of good governance and accountability, if you look at the what is, it's a buzzword in the world today, we parliamentarians as policymakers need to make unbiased decisions based not only on evidence, but also on making the most politically relevant decisions because that's important as a politician you play that role so it's not only on technicalities so there has to be a trade-off between multiple competing social values because there's limited resources so the decision making process is very complex it's not as easy as it may seem on the outside and it's not as easy as making technical decisions that is why parliamentarians have to be uh, very strong in, in evaluation culture to be able to know how to use the tool. So uh, if you look at it, if you go to this position that today, uh, as how does it really, if you look at all this uh, as parliamentarians, right? How do we really look at uh, uh, how we work forward? Now look at, uh, can I go back to the earlier slide, please? Earlier one, before that, before that, please. One more. Okay, what are the key institutions in a country that enables monitoring and evaluation of development goals? If you look at most countries, the, you get a monitoring and evaluation department, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Then you have the parliament, uh, the SDG units, the Ministry of Finance, the Supreme Audit Office. These are some of the key institutions that really uh, enables uh, evaluation to work in countries. Uh, and uh, in the next slide, please. So if you look at it, does it really work this way? How do these departments, if they do exist, how do they work? Usually in most countries, there is no particular unit that works, looks after evaluation. And there's also uh, the sometimes uh, there's no responsibility. And overall, there are no evaluation policies. There isn't, there isn't a national evaluation policy or a law that is mandatory for countries to implement evaluation. So uh, on the other hand, the parliament does not have a mechanism. There are no evaluation reports. Even if you have the SDGs, you have a very complex, sophisticated, sophisticated evaluation uh, system. Eventually, it cannot be understood in parliament because parliament does not have the capacity to read those reports. You need to change this whole system because then the demand for evaluation becomes greater if parliament is uh, empowered. 
Then we have, if you look at a national budget, right, even now most countries don't have a performance-based budgeting system and it is not based on evidence. So there's a huge waste of resources. And uh, finally, if you look at in reality how it works, you get the Auditor General's office, which is supposed to monitor and evaluate all public projects, public works, public expenditure. But this is purely based on financial terms and not on results. So basically there is no evaluative mechanism in the Supreme Audit Office, except that it is the traditional conventional accounting system, which now we're trying to uh, begin to change. So uh, uh, next slide, please. So if you look at the world today, if you see this picture, what do you see? Well, today in the world, the issue is not that there is a lack of information, but the issue is of in, an information overload and that mixed with fake news. Now that is very dangerous. How can policymakers sift through all this data, all these fake news? So we need to be very careful. And as the famous economist uh, uh, Amrita Sen said, I quote, economic growth is only one aspect of the process of economic development and economic development embraces a vast area. Yeah, and there are many models of development also. But by purely using mathematical data comparisons, can we say that one country is better off than another? Unquote. In the same way, we could ask ourselves the question that purely on mathematical data, could we come to the conclusion that a particular project is successful and that another is not? So globally, countries are beginning to build more and more effective monitoring and evaluation systems to cope with the huge amount of information that is being generated and concepts such as managing for development results, performance-based budgeting, and performance audits are commonly used tools to cope with the huge amount of information being made available. But is this information, are these tools being familiarized with the parliamentarians who have to finally promote the culture of evaluation and who have the teeth to enforce mandatory laws in the country to use this? So basically, that's where we are looking at the gap. I would like to go to the next slide. So, uh, as you see, as Winston Churchill rightfully said, I quote, true genius resides in the capacity for evaluation of uncertain, hazardous, and conflicting information, unquote, which is so true today. Thus, in a world of full of which are full of misinformation, fake news, politically biased and emotionally charged data, and an overload of information, how do we filter? Thank you very much for the slides. Um, I think I can already see that you know participants are uh, uh, posting questions. Uh, we will take questions at the questions and answers session after the presentations and uh, discussions. So, uh, and I invite all the participants. Uh, we have, you know, uh, many participants join this panel, uh, participating in this panel. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, and your thoughts or any experience even uh, regarding, you know, engaging parliamentarians in evaluation, please post your questions in the questions and answers box. Uh, so let me uh, now invite Honorable Natalia Nikitenko, a member of parliament from Kyrgyz Republic, to make the presentation, case study presentation, uh, bringing you know, more concrete examples uh, from Kyrgyz Republic. Uh, Honorable Kabir Hashim mentioned about you know, why it is important for parliamentarians to promote evaluation. So uh, what uh, has happened in Kyrgyz Republic? Over to you, uh, Honorable Natalia Nikitenko. Thank you. Hello, everyone. And it's a pleasure <clears throat> and honor for me to participate in the conference. Uh, I apologize from the beginning for the poor internet connection. It might be not very good because I'm right in the middle of my third campaign uh, for other five years as a member of parliament, traveling through the regions, meeting with people and definitely experiencing in practice how important evaluation is for me as a parliamentarian to have reliable data, to talk to people, to be accountable, to answer their questions. So uh, regarding my presentation, I would like to 
give the example of our small mountains country, Kyrgyzstan is bordering China, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and Tajikistan, right in the middle of Central Asia. And uh, actually, we are very efficient in setting up the parliamentary democracy, parliamentary rule of law. That is why the parliament, according to our constitution, has uh, big functions and oversight function as well. But how successful we are as members of parliament to use our functions, including oversight and representative function. So, and how evaluation helped me as a member of parliament and parliament of my country to be more responsible, to be more accountable and transparent for people and to be as, um, as uh, members of parliaments more equipped with real data. So I would like to give you the case, the example of, of our parliamentary, how we uh, actually come up to use the evaluation instruments and tools, how we learned about that. And can I ask for the next slide, please? Definitely, we started to work as members of parliament from 2010 with national evaluation network with evaluators practitioners and that was the real start of how members of parliaments learned and knew about evaluation how it's working working in practice why it is important but from that time other other 10 years until now we're still learning because evaluation is really a process and uh, definitely our parliament and government, we were not ready uh, at one moment. So we started to work with National Evaluation Network. I am as a parliament member, learned about evaluation and joined the global agenda. And I'm very grateful to Honorable Kabir Hashim, uh, my other colleagues, Asela, Honorable Ananda Pokharel, because uh, I learned the experience of their countries. <laughs> to implement in my own country in the parliament, participating from year to year in the global parliamentarians forum, in the global evaluations forum. And we come up in 2017 to invite the parliamentarians and evaluators for the uh, evaluation forum in my country, in Bishkek, capital of the Kyrgyz Republic. And parliamentarians, my colleagues and the government were practically more and more involved in the evaluation agenda. So this is how we started to learn from each other, uh, exchange experience, and that helped us a lot. Can I ask for the next slide, please? So Kyrgyzstan, we started to work practically to set up the framework for evaluation in 2014. So it took a time of two or three years to learn about the evaluation mechanisms in other countries, how the agenda is working. And in 2014, I am as a member of parliament working together with evaluators, practitioners, uh, we developed the law, the legislation about evaluation. And what we did, we made evaluation mandatory for the government and the parliament. So it should be used for legislation for state programs. We set up this legislation as a framework, but honestly speaking, it wasn't fulfilled with kind of the content because first of all, we needed experts, people, we needed a lot of trainings for government officials, people working in the parliament and government, how practically use and implement the evaluation, how use the results of evaluation. So it took a time and uh, we worked together with the government. So the next step that we did, uh, it was actually related with development of the strategy of the parliament where we included evaluation as a special identification that it should be used in the work of parliamentary committees. Then we elaborated as parliamentarians the format for the report of the prime minister in the parliament. Annually, the cabinet of ministers, whole government, including the prime minister headed by the prime minister, comes to the parliament and gives the report to the parliamentarians and the whole nation about their activity. 
So they used to do that whatever they wanted, you know, they used different standards. What we did using the indicators and uh, evidence-based approach, we set up as parliamentarians the special format with indicators for the prime minister for his annual report. And that is done now for already five years. So this report is working. Now we're working how to link these indicators with SDG agenda more efficiently. And um, already after having the global parliamentarian forum activities uh, be involved in the global agenda, we set up Eurasian forums of parliamentarian with our neighboring countries and started to exchange experience, exchange legislation, discuss the evaluation topic and how it should be implemented. And already in last year, 2019, we come up to the practical uh, tools and instruments. So this tool was uh, the decree of the parliament including methodology, methodology of evaluation for legislation and another methodology of evaluation for uh, governmental programs. Can I ask for the next slide? And next slide, please. So the period from the framework in the law that said that evaluation should be there that we accepted in 2014 until the decree and the very clear step-by-step -step methodology how to use evaluation for the parliament it took actually five years so this decree was accepted just in 2019 and let me give you more detailed um, information how it really um, working and why it is important. Can I ask for the next slide, please? So how the parliament of most of the countries usually work and why evaluation is important for us. Usually the parliament have the traditional instrument of control. Uh, most of the parliaments, they are structured like that they have parliament committees and the parliamentarian committees so the parliament members, they belong to different committees. So usually those parliament committees, they are empowered from the control and oversight function to monitor the work of different ministries, state agencies, and the parliaments and their committees, they have naturally several very basic tools for that. Usually this is committee or parliamentary hearings when we invite the uh, government officials with their reports, uh, its scrutiny process. This is inquiries that members of parliaments and committees can send to the government, collect information. This is parliamentary investigation. But traditional form of parliamentary control that they used is actually kind of the repressive instrument and tool, rather than giving the members of parliament information in time to equip member of parliament with more information, evidences, how efficient this legislation is working in practice. What is the impact of this legislation on program that the members of parliaments accepted, discussed, promoted? So the control mechanism, it works mostly at the final stage when they see that the problem is there and this is not working properly, etc but it's not giving the regular and the fulfilled information. So the evaluation tools are very important from that point of view as well, to equip the parliaments and the governments with new approaches and new tools to be more responsible, uh, evidence-based, you know, more equipped with uh, information in their decision-making process in the legislation. Can I ask for the next slide, please? So evaluation for the parliaments, for the members of parliaments, it really focuses on the interest of various groups of society and help us be more open, efficient, and equipped. It's addressing really the people's needs and raising the accountability of government rather than using the uh, repressive 
instruments for the government. It's providing reliable data, is raising the efficiency of both government and parliament. And aware of that, we come up to the developing of the very clear and practical methodology. Can I ask for the next slide, please? So I mentioned the legislation that we had. Yes, this legislation that we accepted identified that all parliamentary committees should select uh, one or two, the most important and crucial piece of legislation for their sectors that they are responsible for per year and organize evaluation. But we didn't have the process, the content, who is doing that, how the parliament committees should work with evaluators, with practitioners, uh, what should be the process, what should be the methodology, who is doing what. So they took some time to formate methodological guidelines for evaluation of implementation of the laws and methodological guidelines for evaluation of implementation of government programs. At last, they were accepted and we already piloted that. So those two documents accepted by the parliament as the decree, they already were piloted in two committees of the parliament. One of them uh, is the my, kind of my committee. So I'm a chairperson on the committee on law enforcement and anti-corruption. So how it worked? Can I ask for the next slide, please? So we included in the decree and methodology uh, special regulation that each parliamentary committee mandatory should select at least one, at least one crucial piece of legislation and at least one state program. The next step that we are doing, and we already piloted that in my committee. So this is uh, selecting the uh, group, working group, creating the working group, as they call this um, in our parliament. So the committee makes the decision to organize the process of evaluation, identifies the people who should be in this working group. Usually, this is the members of the parliament from this committee. Uh, this is uh, representatives of government. Definitely, these are representatives of evaluation society, practitioners, evaluators, and representatives of civil society, different non-governmental organizations which are working on that topic and have voice in the society. Then, uh, by this decision of the committee, we identify uh, the terms of reference for these working groups. The period of work, the criteria, the indicators, etc. And then essentially this is the evaluation process is going. At the end, what we do according to the decree that we accepted. So the evaluation group forms the evaluation report. And this report is presented to the parliamentary committee. Or the committee can make the decision that this um, information is very important for the society. This piece of legislation, for example, uh, is very important for everyone. And the committee make the decision that the whole chamber will be listening to this evaluation report and make the decision. Uh, we started from the level of the committee. So practically what we did, uh, we actually selected the piece of legislation related with uh, domestic violence prevention. This is very serious problem in the region and in my country, unfortunately. So this law was accepted five years ago and we are not very much success, uh, like satisfied how it worked. So we organized the evaluation process for this piece of legislation by the mechanism and methodology as I described before. And then when the presentation on the committee was done on the evaluation report, that was real, uh, let's say, a little bit shock, I would say, for my colleagues, representatives of the government, et cetera, because, because it gave some depths, you know, some 
uh, really reliable evidences and information why it is not working, why the legislation is not working on that, on this topic. What are the real problems? What is the impact of this legislation uh, for the people? So that was really uh, important evaluation report discussion in the committee. And after that, committee, my committee, we made the decision not just to listen the evaluation report, because this, this is not the, uh, the reason, the only reason to give the information to, you know. The reason was to make the, let's say, uh, changes, to include some necessary and urgent changes in the legislation according to those problems that evaluation report actually uh, like uh, lighted, highlighted. And this is what happened. So we, as the parliamentary committee, made the decision that this legislation on prevention, domestic violence should be changed, should be updated. That is not working properly. That is not actually protecting women and kids from domestic violence properly. And based on the evidences and validation reports, we included many changes and actually developed the new legislation. And this new legislation was presented to, you, to the chamber uh, together with uh, evaluation reports, uh, like highlights. So uh, we believe that was very good uh, first experience for us, very practical, how we use, you know, the evaluation tools and mechanisms uh, practically for one very concrete piece of legislation that is important for my country and people and how those evidences, ideas, and results of this huge work that involved all stakeholders, actually, practically, uh, influenced on the society, made the changes, made us, um, you know, to be more aware of the problems and more responsible as the people who make the decisions and actually accept the legislation for that topic. So that was our kind of first experience with the law. And then we selected several other pieces of legislations and state programs. And now we're in the process uh, of implementation. Can I ask for the next slide, please? So uh, my presentation that can be being sent to the participants. There are more details about the terms of reference, about the process. And uh, we are more than happy to share our like first experiences in very practical implementation. Uh, also to share our experience, how the legislation on evaluation is working, how the uh, report to the government in front of the parliament is working in my country. So we're very open uh, to share our experience and we learn a lot from the Global Parliamentarians Forum, from the international agenda, from you, my honorable colleagues. And thank you very much for that. So the next slide, please. Uh, thank you everyone for your attention. The next slide. And uh, here is the, uh, my uh, email. I'm very open to answer your questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Natalia Nikitenko, for uh, making the case study presentation, especially bringing uh, experience from uh, Kyrgyz Republic. At, actually, it is not only from Kyrgyz Republic, but uh, of course, you know, you mentioned about the uh, Eurasian region. Uh, there are some other countries. Taking Kyrgyz Republic as an example, they are also following Kyrgyz Republic and see, you know, how to engage parliamentarians in their countries as well, uh, of course, neighboring countries to Kyrgyz Republic. So thank you very much for making that example to the region as well, not only in your country, and being a champion in bringing many law to the country so that the parliament can uh, monitor and evaluate uh, the laws and uh, policies uh, the parliament pass. Uh, so with that note, and I know that you are in the middle of a parliamentary election, that is the nature of parliamentarians. Honorable Kabir Hashim just finished the uh, parliamentary election and uh, is, uh, was uh, re-elected to the parliament and you are running for the uh, parliamentary election and uh, uh, all the best for your 
election campaign as well. But of course, parliamentarians need to go back to their citizens, your constituencies, and say what you have done. And of course, you know, if you can show results, uh, that will make a difference. So that is about monitoring and evaluation. Uh, and uh, you are champions promoting monitoring and evaluation. So now we uh, move to the uh, discussions. Uh, we have Honorable Anand Pokharel from Nepal, and we were supposed to have uh, Honorable Evelyn uh, Empagi uh, Naomi from uh, uh, Uganda, former parliamentarian from Uganda, as well as uh, chair of the or the president of the African Parliamentarians Network on Development Evaluation, but I'm not sure she is really connected. The reason is she is also in the middle of uh, the election campaign and in the constituency. So uh, I'm not sure whether she has you know, proper internet connection. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's the nature of parliamentarians, as I mentioned. Uh, you know, go back to the constituency and then you, know, you also face some challenges. Uh, Honorable Anand Pokharel uh, is the former uh, Minister of Civil Aviation Culture in Nepal uh, and also a former member of parliament in Nepal and uh, he is a, a steering committee member of the Global Parliamentarians Forum for Evaluation and one of the three parliamentarians initiated this global movement with Honorable Kabir Hashim and Honorable uh, Manan from Bangladesh. These are the three parliamentarians initiated this uh, moment and Honorable uh, Natalia Nikitenko also joined uh, immediate after the initial stages. Uh, as she mentioned in uh, uh, Kathmandu in 2015. Uh, and Honorable uh, Ananda Pokharel is the chair of the Nepal National Parliamentarians Forum for uh, Development uh, Evaluation Policy. Uh, and uh, most importantly, he was instrumental in inclusion of evaluation in the Nepal constitution. In, in the world, only few countries have evaluation included in the constitution and Nepal is one of the countries and he was the champion in that and also many other you know, fronts of you know, promoting evaluation in the country, including bringing the uh, draft national evaluation bill, which is now in the upper house of Nepal. So uh, without any further delay, let me invite uh, Honorable uh, Anand Pokharal uh, to bring you know uh, some concrete examples from uh, Nepal. Over to you, sir. And at the same time, I would like to uh, invite all the participants to uh, you know uh, post your questions uh, through the questions and uh, answers uh, box, and definitely uh, we will address them after the uh, uh, the discussion and presentations. Uh, Honorable Anand Pokharel, unmute yourself and uh, take the floor. You are listening to me? Yes, now we yes. Yeah. Now we can hear you. Previously we could not hear you. Please yeah. go ahead. Hello and good morning from Nepal. This time I would like to thank the event organizer for this for this opportunity. We are all gathered in this fifth <coughs> Asian evaluation week, <coughs> virtually in the midst of COVID-19 pandemic. <coughs> I hope for successful completion of this event. This is third time I participated, participated on the behalf of uh, Parliamentarian Forum in Asian Evaluation Week. This is good opportunity for me. Thank you for thank you again for organizers. Parliamentarians are major stakeholders of evaluation, and their role is crucial in making and shaping the policies of public concerns. They can also play important role to mobilize the necessary means of implementation and pa partnership, support the identification of, of solution and best practices, and promote the coordination and effectiveness of the international development system. They can also be involved to make the development open, inclusive, 
participatory and transparent for all people. People center, gender sensitive, respect women rights and have a particular focus on the poorest, most vulnerable and those furthest behind to support the policy related issue of evaluation and encourage parliamentarians to make evidence based policies. National Parliament Forum on Development Evaluation Policy in Nepal was established in 2014, which was, which was the first National Forum of Parliamentarians on Evaluation globally. The, the Parliamentarian Forum as an evaluation forum for the parliamentarians has been playing an important role in promoting evaluation nationally and internationally in partnership with the other stakeholders. In this history of evaluation, in coordination of the Parliament Forum of Nepal, the Constitution Assembly included evaluation in Nepal in the Constitution of Nepal. Uh, there are two articles in our new Constitution, which is declared in 2016. It said, example, to the whole world in the field of evaluation and development. Now, Ivory Coast also include the um, evaluation policy in Constitution. I mentioned Kavir Hashim. Internationally, it played a crucial role in hosting the historical global gathering on the occasion of culmination of the year of evaluation 2015 in the Parliament of Nepal, where several far reaching agenda were launched, including Evil Agenda 2020, which is the first ever long term global vision for evaluation. This is the history. It was the history. It was launched and endorsed in the Legislative Parliament of Nepal by various stakeholders, including governments, parliaments, parliamentarians, civil society and academia, UN agency, development partners, and individual development thinkers, experts, professionals, champions, and activists with great energy and great humor. In an era of global solidarity and partnership, <clears throat> The launching of the Eval Agenda 2020 from the Parliament was possible because of the active role of the National Parliament Forum of Nepal and its special relation with the fellow parliamentarians, including the Right Honorable Speaker of the Legislative Parliament of Nepal, who presided over the launching ceremony. In addition to the Eval Agenda 2020, various evaluation networks and forums were also launched during the culmination ceremony. This included, this is the one of the most important declaration, Global Parliament and Forum, Evaluation, Evaluation Forum, <clears throat> and Eval networks such as Eval STG, Eval Gender Plus, Eval Youth, and Eval Indigenous. Now we are the, in the point of the self-evaluation our journey. Because this is the uh, 2020, we declare we declare this agenda up to 2020, now in the stage of the evaluation. National Parliament Forum Nepal also contributed such significant including their religions to natural and human created disaster. The bill was drafted by the government especially National Planning Commission, and circulated to the various stakeholders, including National Parliament Forum, Bhopage, and lawyers. Development evaluation are indeed a complex individual that involves many diverse perspectives. Variation dimension and activities at different space and times in order to manage the complex evaluation system. Countries develop evaluation policies and act to standardize the evaluation process that help to ensure positive change in people's life and nature. The government of Nepal table monitoring and evaluation bill 2020 at the National Assembly in March 2020, aiming to make development policy plan program project transparent and result-based by initializing monitoring and evaluation system. You see, unfortunately, I have to say, the parliament, whole parliament process are <coughs> postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, these things are not under discussion in Parliament due to the uh, pandemic. The draft bill was a product of the continuous effort from the parliamentarian forum, government, and other agencies in a bid to make development initiative 
effective and deliver the result that are sustainable. Past experience also revealed that the well-intended policy may also have a startling result with unintended negative side effect, both a short and long term. Volunteer organization for professional evaluation, one of the stakeholders dedicated for promotion of quality and utilization focus evaluation required to review and provide some feed, feedback for improvement where, where required the, <clears throat> the outcome of the review and believe many other offer some suggestion to the member of the parliamentarians to improve the content of the bill and provide some grounds for future elaboration of the bill in the form of standards, guidelines, and directives, both at federal and sub-national level. So it is a welcoming step to have a bill which aims to improve development management in Nepal. It has also considered many important criteria and elements to improve quality evaluation in Nepal. There is, however, some area which can be further improved in the bill and can also be hopeful while making evaluation standard and guidelines through the Parliamentary Forum of Nepal. Then, in short, I can say, Parliamentary Forum of Nepal did three most important jobs which is globally influenced. First one, Nepal established Parliament Forum in Parliament globally first. Second, we declared a global Parliament Forum from Nepal on 2020, 2015, as well as we tabled MNE bill in the parliament. These are three things, very important job Parliament Forum of Nepal did right now also. Finally, I would like to thank the organizer for the great opportunity and also to all the designatory and partners for your patience. And I especially thanks and congratulate Honorable Kabir Hasim who re-elected and present this lead presentation um, in our journey. He is the pioneer and champion also. He, he, have, he did a lot of job in the evaluation journey, but we have to partially we are success to formish the parliamentarian in the different globally, but until and unless we are on a, we able to form the parliament forum in evaluation in USA, China, Russia, and European Union. That time will be the great successor in the history. Then this is my this is my request and attention. We have to do more job in this regard in this area also. And again, I would like to thanks and congratulate Natalia also. He did very good job. He present his she present his case study very nicely. It will be the sample example to all all the uh, Parliament Forum in this group. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Pokharel, and also, you know, uh, complimenting others. Uh, actually, uh, three, um, you know, speakers today we have uh, are uh, champions. Why I'm saying, you know, champions, all of these three countries, Sri Lanka, Nepal, and Kyrgyzstan, uh, there is, you know, enabling environment for evaluation. And uh, these three leaders, you know, uh, were instrumental in that. In Sri Lanka, there is national evaluation uh, policy endorsed by the government. So Honorable Kabir Hashim was, you know, uh, behind for that. And also in Nepal, as I mentioned, you know, evaluation is in the constitution and also the bill is in the parliament for the approval, evaluation bill. In uh, Kyrgyz Republic, as Honorable Natalia mentioned, uh, the MNA law was passed in 2014 and Honorable Natalia was very much instrumental in that process. And all three countries, uh, there was, you know, uh, uh, special global events held in the parliament uh, led by these three leaders. Uh, the first ever uh, uh, evaluation event in a parliament, national parliament, was happened in Nepal parliament in 2015. Then 2017, uh, the global evaluation forum in Kyrgyz parliament and 2018, Eval Kalambu 2018 in the uh, parliament of Sri Lanka. Uh, and uh, also, uh, uh, as Honorable uh, uh, Ananda Pokharel mentioned, the first National Parliamentarians Forum was initiated in Nepal. So they have been really instrumental in promoting evaluation through parliamentarians and parliaments. And these are you know, con very much concrete examples for uh, many other countries. So with this note and uh, thanking all the presenters, let me open the floor for uh, questions uh, and answers.
I can see already there are you know very interesting questions. At the same time, I would invite you know participants. If you have you know further questions, please you know uh, post them on uh, the chat. Uh, sorry, uh, questions and answers uh, box. Uh, you can definitely you know uh, you know uh, join the discussion. The first question is uh, mainly for Honorable Kabir Hashim. Uh, are there examples you can cite of parliament requiring departments, ministries to carry out evaluations and report on them and whether any such evaluations has had impact on parliamentary decision making? Uh, I think you uh, got the question. If you want me to repeat that, I can do that. Honorable Kabir Hashim, uh, floor is yours. Uh, please unmute yeah. yourself. Thank you, Asela. Uh, well, uh, that's an interesting question. Yes, now we've started the process of uh, establishing the culture of uh, using evaluation reports in Parliament. And I wouldn't say specifically any such thing has happened in the recent past in Sri Lanka, but we did see a uh, situation in which there was a project that had already been implemented and the post the post evaluation report which was submitted to parliament was analyzed by some of us as parliamentarians and we uh, found that the the location was not suitable the traffic there was a it was a highway project and the traffic on that particular highway was very low compared to other areas which required highways uh, more urgently so through the evaluation report we highlighted the fact that millions of dollars of funds that were invested could have been alternatively used for projects which are more priority for the country in terms of saving uh, tra for traffic uh, uh, blocks for fuel burnouts etc and for saving of time that uh, there could have been this project could have been implemented in a different area and the country would have benefited much much more so that came out very effectively to for the people to understand why there should have been a proper evaluation technique before the project was uh, implemented and that people should have had been engaged in the process so that was a clear instance and but i know that in many countries i can't specify exactly but there have been many projects that have been uh, uh, avoided or stopped because in parliament they have been able to bring it up uh, or, and uh, read out evaluation reports. And in the committees, like uh, Natalia said, the committees that have been established in Kyrgyzstan today prevents any such project which is not suitable, which is not uh, 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 the, the priority for society that can be avoided through the processes being set up. So it's happening now, it's beginning to happen. Thank you. Uh, and Honorable Kabir Hashim, I think also you can uh, mention, you know, uh, some of the examples uh, from the Sri Lanka Parliament institutionalization of evaluation, including the uh, Parliamentary Select Committee on Evaluation. I think that is the first ever Parliamentary Select Committee on Evaluation, if you take, you know, whole world uh, and some of the measures, including uh, training of uh, Parliament Research Unit. Uh, uh, I think uh, those are some other examples also you can add that. Yes, of course. I mean, in, in terms of uh, setting up the systems that uh, which which was not there before, uh, after, after introducing the culture of evaluation in the Sri Lankan parliament, we managed to lobby and establish a, a select committee for uh, evaluation, which is a very powerful body, a special select committee. And the, uh, the permanent head of that would be the deputy speaker of parliament at any moment of time the deputy speaker would uh, chair the select committee and at that select committee we had enough power enough that we had enough teeth to ensure that we could uh, lobby for the national evaluation policy we could also look at any bills and ensure that it pro goes through a process of evaluation so that is a success uh, in Sri Lanka. Subsequently, we also, through that select committee, we moved uh, 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 a motion to get the national evaluation policy draft done. We got it through to parliament. Then we are looking at the draft. 
uh, uh, motions that should be included in the national evaluation policy. And as Asela, uh, my colleague Asela said rightfully, we also managed to move into the process of uh, building capacity within parliament, which is critical because none of this will work if you don't have the capacity in parliament for parliamentary staff who are conversant with the tools of evaluation. So, because then they could uh, easily help parliamentarians with the reports, with, you know, interpreting data and information. So what we did was we managed to convince our speaker, put in place through our select committee to have a training program for the research unit. And uh, the research staff in parliament are now becoming well-trained with the tools of evaluation, which makes it easy for people like us to go and ask for any report on any project and then take it to the uh, to other committees in parliament and talk about it. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, these are, you know, uh, good examples, uh, of course. And uh, I remember Honorable Kabir Rashim was always uh, encouraging to uh, train and educate the uh, parliament research unit to support parliamentarians, because as he rightly mentioned, parliamentarians have very limited time to read and also evaluation reports are lengthy reports. So definitely parliamentarians cannot uh, you know, go through the long reports. But of course, uh, uh, you know, there is a mechanism within the parliament, parliament research unit, which can support parliamentarians with brief reports. So that's why the Sri Lanka parliament started this process to uh, build the capacity of parliament research unit to provide you know brief evaluation reports so that parliamentarians can use this evidence in the uh, in the parliamentary debates and also when taking decisions uh, so uh, he was the pioneer in promoting this uh, thank you very much for that uh, let me also uh, take the second question at the same time i would uh, uh, request parliamentarians uh, sorry uh, participants to uh, post their questions uh, if they have any questions to the panelists. Uh, and also, I see uh, David Roberts have you know uh, complimented uh, about the presentations. Thank you very much. Uh, the second question is from uh, Mexican Vope. Actually, the Mexican Congress think uh, evaluation use is only for the executive branch. How to get them into the process? So is it evaluation is only for the executive branch or whether, you know, parliament can also get involved? Uh, that's the question. Uh, I would, you know, start with Honorable Natalia Nikitanko and then uh, Honorable Kabir Rashim and Honorable Anand Pokharal can also uh, join the discussion. Uh, thank you very much for the question and just uh, uh, a little bit information about the Kyrgyz parliament how, for example, we um, use the evaluation as the parliamentarians, as the parliament, not just to, to listen the information, but practically how to use the results of evaluation. So different models, how evaluation is kind of used in different parliaments include, for example, the special committees in the parliament, which are responsible specifically for evaluation reports on different pieces of legislation or policies and presenting that to the chamber. And we use the different model in our parliament. So we have in the parliament 14 committees and uh, through the decree that we accepted, each committee is responsible for uh, actually making evaluation at least of one legislation and state program per year. So then uh, what we try to do, that evaluation would not be just listened in the parliament and sent to the government, you know, how we try to make sure that the results of evaluation reports are in the process. We have just, as I mentioned before, the piloted experience, but because our parliamentary committees, we establish the working group who is working on evaluation. And that includes different stakeholders, parliamentarians, apparatus, uh, evaluators, VOPE representatives, right? And uh, government officials. Then we use the official power of the parliamentary committees to check 
how the results of evaluation that were presented for the parliamentary committee are actually uh, executed by the government officials, by the ministries. So we come back to the implementation of evaluation report results together with this working group and the ministries responsible for that topic again. So what we did regarding the prevention domestic violence law. So we listened the evaluation reports once in our committee and we uh, actually we voted for the special decree of the committee that we accepted the results of evaluation reports. We actually aware of all the problems that this report showed, you know, to the parliament, to the people, to the public. And um, in this decree of the committee, we also included the next step, action plan for the government officials, for the ministries and state agencies, what they should do, the next steps, how to use those recommendations from the evaluation reports and the problems that that mentioned, um, what they should do. And we set up the special timeline for them. So the government bodies, according to this evaluation reports, they came back to their work, they reviewed the legislation, they made changes in their action plans on the domestic violence for the country in their policy papers, and then came back after one month to the committee again, because we set up as the committee that, that time frame for them. They came back to us, the government officials, together with VOPES, etc., and we again monitored what was done by the government officials, by the executive agencies, uh, to change the situation, to react on those results, what they should do from the policy side and from legal side. So it's kind of the process of communication between the committee and members of parliaments and executive bodies. And there are different uh, like scenarios, but we use a scenario that we, after the evaluation report acceptance by the committee, we set up at least one or two another hearings in the committee by the evaluation report uh, kind of implementation results. So we keep them more accountable, let's say, more responsible, that will, these will be used, the evaluation results will be used in practice. And I think that the most of the parliaments, they have this power by law, you know, to uh, keep the government official state agencies responsible in that case, they can invite them, can set, set up the time frame for reporting what was done upon this evaluation results, uh, etc. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable uh, Natalia Nikitenko. Honorable uh, Kabir, about this question, you know, uh, whether it's evaluation is only for the executive branch. Of course, you already, uh, you know, brought examples, but, you know, answering this question, uh, how do you want to address that? Um, thank you, Asir. I, I totally disagree with the fact that it is... Uh, uh, evaluation is a domain of uh, executive. It is actually a uh, domain of parliament because parliament is, uh, 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 is a democratically elected representatives of the citizenry and they represent one of the center pillars of a, of a democratic process. And uh, it's a driving force potentially for uh, pushing forward sustainable development and equitable uh, growth because that is it, that whole process comes to parliamentarians who represent uh, disadvantaged groups, the vulnerable people, and that, that political representation it comes through the people itself. So uh, it is important to mobilize parliaments across the world to play this key role in uh, establishing uh, and you know pushing evaluation as a part of the parliamentary process. That is why the, we've been uh, for, we formed the Global Parliamentary Forum for Evaluation because it for it, up to about 2011, 12, 13, when we set up the GPFE, before that, parliamentarians were left out of the whole process, both in government and uh, outside government, in the uh, especially in the evaluation uh, 
community. So we try to bring this in because this is the role, this is the missing link that would bring this whole process together. Because if you look at it, the whole process of policy program, budgeting, and the legislate, legislative uh, powers for budgeting and the oversight function is with parliament. And if parliament is not uh, empowered, then it doesn't work. Therefore, I would like to propose to my friend uh, from Mexico that, that we are willing as a global parliamentary forum to advocate and lobby amongst the members of parliament in the Mexican parliament to become a part of our uh, the forum and for us to be able to then lobby like in other countries to uh, establish evaluation within parliament and to then make it mandatory to have a national evaluation policy so that once you start lobbying through the workers and through parliamentary members you should be able to change the culture in your own country uh, thank you very much honorable kabir rajim honorable ananda pokarel uh... Uh, do you also have any uh, insights for this uh, question about, you know, whether uh, it is uh, evaluation is only for the executive branch or legislature as well? Uh, very shortly, you are muted. I, not actually any uh, question answer, but I have to one um, comment from my side, parliamentarians are transparent for all the people, people center, gender responsive, respected women rights, have a particular focus on the poorest, most vulnerable and those poorest behind. He has big role in the country, in the society, in the whole political process. We have established so many parliament forum in the respective country. We did a very great job to uh, standardize the evaluation process and it's transparent. And uh, some parliament um, from respective countries recognize the parliamentarian forum. But still, they are not, they did not in, included in the budget code. Even some parliament forum did not get any office, parliament, uh, parliament forum office also. Then we have to focus in this issue also for budget code from the respective parliament and office for the respective parliament. And then we have to struggle the own parliament and speaker also to establish this thing for the better insulation in future also. Thank you. Thank you very much for bringing this very important point. Actually, uh, uh, definitely there should be you know, resources allocation for the evaluations from the national budget. Uh, and even in uh, Sri Lanka in, I think, 2017, there was a special motion to the parliament to propose that, you know, uh, the national budget should allocate uh, some resources for the evaluations. And it was, you know, approved by the parliament at that time. But it's still there as a committee on evaluation, which is also very unique, uh, process the national evaluation bill. And uh, also it is, you know, part of the select committee report um, and now next step should be taken. Uh, and in uh, Kyrgyz Republic, of course, there is a many bill and you know, there are a lot of other things happening through the parliament. So institutionalization of evaluation within parliaments is you know, uh, very you know, significant in these countries. So how other countries can uh, learn from these countries about uh, institutionalization and enabling environment for evaluation. Uh, the other thing is uh, the capacity building within the parliament, as you know, uh, uh, you know, mentioned from the Sri Lanka parliament, especially the uh, capacity building of the parliament research unit to support parliamentarians. And now parliamentarians are advocating for national evaluation policy, evaluation uh, law, at, as well as you know, evaluation capacity and use of evaluation. That is most important how to use evaluation for uh, decision making, even the parliament debates, and also when allocating funding for different, as Honorable Kabir mentioned, you know, what are the uh, priorities and you know, where to allocate uh, resources based on evidence. Uh, so I must thank uh, all the panelists for bringing this rich discussion and all the participants. Uh, 
you know, engaging in this uh, panel and also uh, posing some questions, uh, very interesting questions and, you know, engaging with uh, parliamentarians. And I must also thank organizers, uh, Asian Development Bank, ADB, uh, with their partners, giving this opportunity for their Global Parliamentarians Forum for Evaluation and all the uh, parliamentarians champions to uh, uh, bring their experience, share with the participants and promote this idea. And I hope as Honorable Kabir Hashim, you know, invited at the last slide, uh, this is, this can't be done alone. It should be, a, you know, a joint effort. And we invite uh, other parliamentarians, WOPES, uh, development partners, and uh, different stakeholders to join these efforts with the Global Parliamentarians Forum. And uh, let's promote evaluation, uh, especially to achieve uh, sustainable development in next decade. Uh, thank you very much. And looking forward to, you know, uh, greater uh, uh, efforts in, in future. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, uh, one last message, there will be a survey uh, for the participants and please take the survey uh, and, you know, help us to improve uh, uh, sessions in future. Thank you very much.